This is the robotics capstone. So the starting point for the class was that there's a lot of excitement about robotics. So for the class, we wanted to sort of act like a startup a little bit. We identified one topic that was not quite explored, which was assistive robotics. And for this class, we offer two types of projects, physical assistance and social assistance, and we had two types of robot platform. Finally, you came up with an end-to-end -end prototype that represented a solution to the problem. Our project is called RoboEats, and it's a heating and food delivery service. So the goal of our project is to basically help partial paraplegics when their nurse isn't there to help them. They have a robot that can get them food if they need it. We've had a 100% success rate so far today. If you look at the marker, right, every few seconds, it is publishing multiple markers at the same time. The robot was sending over a lot of data through the network and that was causing our visualizations to slow down like quite a bit. Instead of doing all the calculations through the network, we're going to run it directly on the robot and it's going to be way faster because there's no like interference with the, the networking speed. Here you can see the fetch robot. It has a long arm. So we want the robot to be able to pick up the lunchbox and put it in the microwave and heat up the lunchbox. It's been a lot of fun. I didn't know much about robotics at all in the beginning. I feel like I've learned so much over the quarter. And being able to work on a project has been a lot of fun. And as you can see, it's upright, so it won't spill. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so it's done. Yay. Our project is called Robo Angelo, and it's named after the famous painter Michelangelo. Um, we think artistic expression is really important. The goal of Robo Angelo is to provide accessibility to any user. Robo Angelo. Uh, takes a drawing from our surface here and draws it on the whiteboard for you. We have a planning software to figure out how the arm should move to realize every curve, line, letter in your image and draws it one step at a time on the whiteboard for you. Uh, we wanted to make the robot safe for the users so when they were sort of around the robot it wouldn't you know, whack into them, this sort of stuff. We had to do a lot of experimentation to figure out what would, what would work and what wouldn't endanger users of the system. A lot of how we solve that is we have an inverse kinematic solver running on the low level of our technology stack. We went through multiple iterations. Um, the first one didn't push us far enough. The second iteration was two marker version. We didn't get to use this one. And the third iteration was with one inch of a wiggle room which enables us to draw pretty accurately without bottoming out on the marker. It's going to draw something, and then the robot will recreate it on the board. Yay. What's the weather like? Warm and sunny. The project we're working on is called Lucid Robotics. And it's about a little robot called Lucy to help people with dementia. It's essentially Alexa on wheels with more capabilities. What day is it? Today is Wednesday. The caretaker set reminders for the dementia patient and they can basically be automatically reminded of things they need to do throughout the day and this takes away that task from the caretaker so they don't need to constantly remind the dementia patient. One of my favorite parts was um, being able to work with a social robot. Social robotics is a new upcoming kind of scene for robotics um, and there's not many robots like Lucy around um, so it's really cool being able to work with her and have access to that technology.